Oh yeah. It's happening at a party, people. I had a little, th- little theme music. I haven't figured out how to put music behind uh, a Facebook Live yet, so. I'm sick of being bald. I'm going with the wig. That's it. From here on out. Got a little. All right. No, seriously, though. What's happening at party, people? It's, uh, what day is it? Thursday. And uh, I'm going to be getting a little more consistent here with these Facebook Lives. I was on my buddy Owen uh, Hemsaths, a.k.a. Owen Videos show uh, earlier this week on the B Live show that airs weekly on Mondays. And we chatted about having confidence um, when you're shooting videos, having confidence when you're speaking in front of a crowd, having confidence when you're talking in front of a group, uh, D, all of the above. So I uh, thought, you know what? I don't do enough of these Facebook lives. You know, my, my original strategy when I relaunched my podcast for the third time back in 2016 was to do these lives all the time and then just pull the audio from those lives and turn them into a podcast episode. Uh, I haven't done as many of those as I'd like to. Um, so in 2019, I'm committed to doing at least, at least two a month. That's realistic, right? Realistic uh, outcomes there. So anyhow, no, I'm not wearing a, a wig forever. In fact, I just got a haircut. Can you tell? There's hair on there somewhere. Anyhow, um, I just, I was up bright and early this morning for my uh, weekly networking uh, meeting with my friends at BNI Synergy. And I got home and I thought, you know what? There's not a better time than right now to go live to talk about a conversation we got like 30 seconds left in 2018 so why not dive into a few things that i feel are absolutely vital for your brand to have in 2019 you probably should have adopted these strategies well before 2019 but most people uh, are embracing the fact that social media most people not all do i'd say by about 80 percent of brands are, are are embracing the fact that that this stuff's not going anywhere uh, it's been around since almost, it's almost 16 years now, the MySpace days, uh, late 2003, early 2004. I've been there since the inception, which pretty much makes me a pioneer. That doesn't mean I know all the answers by any means at all. Um, we're, we're all um, learning each and every day as these platforms grow and both grow and both go. So, um, and that's just the, the wonderful world of, of digital media, digital marketing, and how it all goes. But I feel there's three things that you can execute on right away. You don't have to hire anybody to do it. You have the full capability to do it. You just have to create the time and make it a priority on your list, right? I, I saw a post the other day, and I'm going to go back and share it for my friend Brittany that she posted about stop telling people that they're not committed. Like, who are you to tell someone what their level of commitment is? And there's a lot of coaches and pitches and products and a lot of experts out there trying to sell stuff on stuff they've been doing for six months and no time or 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 experience behind all that. So, um, and I, I really, I, I really uh, embrace, and I'm guilty. I think we all are at one point in time in trying to onboard a prospect or gain new business from someone uh, when they simply aren't interested. It's so simple for us to say, well, your level of commitment simply isn't there. So, um, choose your words carefully. I'm, I'm, I'm most definitely reevaluating um, how I um, approach my um, prospects, specifically the ones with the podcast. Uh, launch lab the ones where we launch podcasts for brands not as much on the social buzz tv agency side because we do buzz videos and thankfully that business comes to us because one uh, somebody sees one client's videos and they're like i want to do that and so on and so forth what, what we're seeing a lot of within that um as, as far as creating buzz videos is that a lot of personal brands are sprouting out of of the actual uh, content that we're creating for our clients. So, you know, our, the, the model's created for us to approach brands, local businesses, small, medium-sized businesses, give the small and local, smaller guys the opportunity to compete with the bigger guys because that's what social media is all about. You can create content and you can compete with the bigger guys. Maybe your budget isn't comparable to them, but you have the opportunity to at least create content and get into the race where your com- com- um, competition is, regardless if it's you know, a multi-billion dollar brand or simply just the competition that is across 
the street. But I think there um, is is three simple things that you can realistic things that you can do um, right now today before 2019 even gets here. Right? I don't know if you're going away or you know things start to shut down around the 15th. I understand all that, but if you're an entrepreneur, great time to get ahead. Great time to move um, the ball, move the needle down, move the ball down the field. Um, so that you really start 2019 on a running start. Because if we really look at it, the second week of January is really the reality of when things get back into the swing of things. So you've got from around this, let's just call it the 20th, maybe even the 15th, from December 15th to say January 7th, is a solid three, three and a half, almost four weeks to just sit down and say, okay, what does it look like for us to create a piece of content for Facebook every day? What does it look like for us to create a piece of content for Instagram each day? What does it look like to create a piece of content for LinkedIn each day? What does it look like to post a piece of content on the platform that our ideal client is on? So you want to evaluate all those. Are they on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, D, all the above? Or do you want to get really good at one specific platform? Hey, listen, Sebastian, we're strictly B2B. We're doing business with other businesses. We want to eat, meet, not eat. We want to meet other individuals that are within um, the businesses and brands that we're looking to do business with. Well, LinkedIn is probably a great strategy for you then. Untapped market, untapped uh, video market, FYI, completely untapped, and they have an ads platform. Not familiar with the ads platform, haven't ran any ads on LinkedIn, but I do know the content that I do create. When I talk about LinkedIn content, as a brand, you now have the opportunity to create content and share it with individuals. So going in there and sharing a photo, uh, writing an article or a blog post, sharing a video, there's there's a lot of things you can do on your LinkedIn profile, both personally and professionally for your brand. Personally, you should make sure that every single one of the things that are done to have a completed profile on LinkedIn are there. Brands aren't going to want to do business with somebody who's got a half made up LinkedIn profile only. And LinkedIn tells you, hey, listen, your profile is not complete. Go through those steps consistently. Um, or excuse me. Go through those steps that they give you. Uh, so that you can complete the entire LinkedIn profile for your personal brand. Now, for your and that includes being able to connect your SlideShare account. So, if you're a speaker or you give presentations and you've had slide decks, or maybe you teach or train, and you have slide decks. You can upload those slide decks to SlideShare.com, which LinkedIn now owns. So, you can take those slides that you upload to SlideShare, and you can actually upload them to your LinkedIn profile. So on my LinkedIn profile, you're going to see a vast array of content. You're going to see articles that I've written. They're called LinkedIn articles. Anybody can do that. It's a post with more than 1,200, I think, words. You're going to create essentially a blog post, but on LinkedIn. They get high priority because LinkedIn wants content from their users. You can share videos. You can share pictures. Um, I like to post things on the weekend when LinkedIn's not probably not that busy um, and people are still strolling through it and getting some interaction with people that are there. What you don't do while we're talking about LinkedIn, what you do not do, and under any circumstances whatsoever, this is the number one way to absolutely um, – uh, disconnect from someone that you are trying to connect with. And that is in fact, connecting with someone and then saying, sending them a message immediately as soon as you connect with them, throwing up on them on everything wonderful that you do and how you can do it. Don't do that. Connect with someone, send them a message and say, hey, Bob, it's great to connect with you. My name's Sebastian. Um, uh, I'm a professional speaker and I help brands tell their story with social media. If I can ever be of a resource to you, let me know. Or what do you do, Bob? Or maybe I don't even go that far. I wanted to be able to get into a conversation. That's number one. Number two, if you hire someone to handle your personal LinkedIn account, you are ridiculously lazy. That's not smart because LinkedIn is a personal platform. It is a, it's not, excuse me, it's a business platform, but it's very personal. Right? If, if I have somebody that I'm reaching out to, a, specifically a prospect, and I have a third party with bad grammar sending me a general blanket message, there's nothing like there's nothing that says I don't give a rip about you, like blindsiding me with information that I don't even want from someone that I barely even know. And if I know you, even worse, shame on you. Why? Because I know how your tone and how you normally communicate. So if I get some blanketed message about pitching me, and I get them constantly all day long, whether someone wants to. Uh, help me with uh, inbound sales or wants to help me with a new marketing strategy or test out a new product or we found that you'd be great to talk about our product on your show or I'd like to sell you health insurance or whatever the case may be. If you are sending blanketed, generic text messages or uh, uh, in, uh, private messages out through LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, anywhere, you're just doing it wrong. And I don't care who says that it's smart and it's marketing and you know, well, there's no way to automate 
social media. It is a human-based tool that we utilize. Social media has always been around. These tools arrived 15, 16 years ago to help us better uh, communicate. To allow, uh, we used to have the, the fi our fingers used to do the talking. Back in my day, our fingers would do the talking in the yellow pages. We used to go and look for information. Now information comes directly to us. So I went on a little bit of a tangent from that, but I am so um, tired of seeing spam crap in my inbox on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a business to business platform to connect with people, share valuable information about what you do, share other people's valuable information about what you do, and then seek out people that you're looking to do business with and go through the normal respectful protocol of being able to reach out and prospect with them, which, which, which are as follows, which include but are not limited to reaching out and messaging that individual because you just met them to say hello and it's great to connect with them. If you're not currently connected to them, reaching out with another, reaching out to another existing ex uh, connection that you are connected to and asking for a formal introduction. Side note, don't do this if you don't know the person. Do not do that. If you, you're not going to reach out to somebody that you don't know and ask for an introduction. If I don't know you and you want to meet somebody within my network, I'm not going to introduce you until I actually know you. So probably want to get to know your connection first before reaching out and asking for that right hook, as my boy Gary V uh, would say. Um, when you're setting up, when you first connect with people, so LinkedIn, spam messages, um, 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 anything that's automated, anything that's going to automate your personal experience, don't do it. Anything where you can actually open up your browser, log into LinkedIn, and post something, do that. And do that every single day. Video, uh, 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 photos, write a LinkedIn article, write a post with a photo, share a post, be a contributor to other online publications um, that you specify in that are specifically cater to exactly what you do. If you're an entrepreneur, if you own a large fortune, uh, you know, 500 company, whatever the case may be, whatever your, 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 your niche is, find publications that you can, you can, uh, you can contribute to. So, I don't know how in the world I went down the LinkedIn black hole, but it was probably because of all the spam messages that I constantly receive, both from people that I don't know and people, and sadly people that I, that I do know. So if you had any plans for mass marketing other than running ads on, on LinkedIn, um, I hate to, to be the one to, to, to rain on that parade, but don't do that. That's just going to make people um, angry with you. Uh, number one. Um, all right. I have on my list here three things that you need to absolutely crush it in, in 2018. LinkedIn's one of them, right? Find out where you resonate. Um, if, you're, if you're trying to reach consumers, LinkedIn is not your place. I see realtors posting their, their real estate listings on LinkedIn, and that'll blow my mind. I know, I know, I know. Let me guess. You've sold a house on LinkedIn. Great. One in uh, how many million realtors are out there have actually had accomplished uh, uh, accomplish success with being able to 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 sell a house on LinkedIn. You need to, if you want to attract the masses, you need to go where the masses are at and direct them where you need to be through your content, through your valuable content by giving them a reason to actually engage with your content, follow with you, uh, follow, uh, follow up with you, return your email or your phone call or whatever the case may be. I believe um, and I'll kick things off by saying, you know, as a brand in 2019, you need to figure out what it takes to find a platform where you resonate with. Maybe you're really good at blogging. Maybe you're really good at videos. Maybe you're really good at Facebook, but you've just been inconsistent. I really encourage you to find out where you're really good. Like where, where is your niche that you're really good at? Now, if you can't figure out what that is, of course, that would be the time that you would need to um, loop in a professional that knows what they're doing regarding taking something from nothing and turning it into something pertaining to a digital strategy uh, for your brands. But even as a brand for your company, even though you're creating content for your brand as a company, I believe that, that us as individuals need a personal brand regardless of what you're doing, whether you're an entrepreneur, whether you're a solopreneur, whether you're working for a brand, uh, whether you're part of a sales team, we're getting a lot, a lot too getting some sales teams to come in and the individual reps understand the value of creating their own personal brand. We do that for our friends over at U.S. Health Advisors. Um, uh, the, the, the individual reps like to create content and share them on their platforms because it helps them generate additional leads and business for people that need a very, 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 very important product and service. And that is, in fact, health insurance. That's the right way to actually market health insurance is to create content, share it, and run small ads on it. You realize for like 10 bucks, you can reach like 5,000 people. Facebook ads, Instagram ads, grossly underpriced right now. And that's why it's kind of like Google AdWords back in 2000, 2001, 
where you could buy keywords for next to nothing and absolutely crush it. Then it became very mainstream. Facebook ads will become mainstream in the next 12 to 24 months, if not sooner. So now's the time to capitalize on the fact of being able to say, hey, here's 20 bucks. I want to reach 10,000 people. So don't slip, don't sleep on, on the, the opportunity of being able to create simple content, right? What do you mean by simple content, Sebastian? Well, you know, just taking out your phone and saying, hey, I'm John the, um, I'm John the dry cleaner. And today I just wanted to let you know that um, it's Monday. So that means Monday Madness. Bring two dress shirts in and get the third one cleaned for free. Monday Madness, mention this video. Take the video, post it on Instagram, post it on Facebook, boost the ad for 20 bucks. It took you maybe, maybe 15 minutes, if I'm exaggerating, 20, 25 minutes to shoot a video on your phone, to post it, and then to boost it. And if you own Joe's Dry Cleaner and it's right here across the street here in Coconut Grove, well, then you can post that video and you can target people that are within a mile of your location, two miles of your location. They know what your location is anyway because you've got your address on your Instagram profile and you've got it on your Facebook profile. Do you understand that Facebook and Instagram, if you own a local business, Facebook and Instagram have made it so ridiculously easy for, for customers to find you, you've just got to execute on the tools that they're giving you. For instance, I'm gonna give you two examples. The first example, Instagram. If you look on a business profile, in fact, I've got my personal profile as a business profile so that I can run ads on my content. You've got the ability to do that. If you wanted to turn your personal profile into an actual business profile, I have it as a business profile profile as a public figure. But let me use an example for, uh, let's see here, Coral Gables title and escrow. So I don't know if you're going to be able to see this. Maybe we are. Maybe not. Okay. But anyway, this is the Coral Gables title and escrow page. No, you can't see it here. Anyway, there's three options, call, email, directions. There's a reason that these options are on there. This is a local business, client of Social Buzz TV's Coral Gables title and escrow. Big shout out to Title Buzz. If you're in Miami, we're having a carnival next Saturday, December 15th, 11 to 4, Carnival for the Cure, supporting Miami Cancer Institute. Bring the whole family. It's going to be food, games. Uh, Rich Barber is going to be in a dunk tank. So side note, if you're in Miami. Uh, anyhow, your Instagram profile, business profile, has an option to call, email, directions. That's because your profile includes your phone number. Imagine that. And your email and the address to your location, right? So when you run an ad, Instagram asks you, what is the goal of you creating or promoting this post on Instagram? Do you want people to call you? Do you want people to walk into your business? I don't know if you own a dry cleaner, Joe, but Joe's dry cleaner probably wants new people to walk in there. Uh, or third, uh, do you want to give people directions to walk into your location? Do you understand that you can post something, right? And that when people are, that aren't currently connected to you start connecting with you because you're running ads in their specific area and, um, you know, a mom or a husband or a, or a college student or some, whatever the day, whoever it is, uh, decides that, oh my gosh, it's, it's, it's Monday morning and I haven't done an ounce of dry cleaning. My goodness, what am I going to do? They're thinking this as they scan Instagram like we all do, thinking about what we should be doing while we're scanning Instagram. And all of a sudden, boom, a little video that tells me not only is it Monday and not only do I need to bring my dry cleaning in, but Joe's dry cleaner, if I bring two shirts in, I get the third one clean for free. Hot diggity dog, I got four shirts. That means I get one for free. Heck, maybe I'll get two for free. As part of the promotion, I'm going to go see Joe's Dry Cleaner today. Joe's Dry Cleaner posted a video. It took him 10, 15 minutes max. Boosted the post for $10 for people that were within a, a mile or two mile radius of their location and found a new customer. I'm just walking you through hypothetically what you can expect to see when you actually get into the game of creating simple content. Maybe it was just a picture of some iron shirts that you'd already got done uh, with, a, and it's on the counter with Joe's Dry Cleaner logo. I don't know who the hell Joe's Dry Cleaner is. I'm just using this for argument's sake right now. And you posted a picture, you can still run an ad on that. Well, maybe I want to do it on Facebook. I don't use Instagram uh, as a local business. Well, first of all, shame on you because you should be because you're leaving money on the table and business that could be all yours. But Facebook is the same thing. You're going to post the video. You're going to post a picture. You're going to boost the ad. You're going to target people in your specific city. If Joe's dry cleaner is in Coconut Grove, well, Joe's going to target people in Coconut Grove and within, say, a two or three mile square radius. I don't think that anybody's going to drive any further than that to go get their dry cleaning. Or if you're like me, I don't drive anywhere for my dry cleaning. My friends over at Fresh Lime Dry Cleaners pick up and drop off my dry cleaning with a smile, and they're awesome. 
yes, they pay me to say that. And that's just how I roll here. And they also do my clothes. So I just got them back. So I'm gonna, I may be dressing up next week. So you guys be ready. All right. So for Facebook and for Instagram, are we clear? Create a, a quick video, create a quick picture, whatever it may be and upload it. And well, first of all, make sure all of your profiles are complete. If your Instagram profile is not complete, well, then people aren't going to be able to find you. Wrong phone number, no address. Don't make it hard for people to find you. Second of all, your Facebook profile as well. Make sure that's absolutely complete. Here's another quick tip if you have a local business on Facebook. Did you know the power of a Facebook review? Have you ever noticed that when you check in somewhere, Facebook automatically asks you, would you like to, uh, do you suggest this place? So Facebook has the opportunity to suggest brands and businesses and also um, uh, suggest them and also recommend them, write a recommendation on there. So you want both from your customers. So when people come in, I would do something like having, you know, those, those, do we have any around here? I wonder. Here we go. See these plastic signs right here? See these little mammer jammers that they sell at, uh, at uh, Staples. I think I bought a whole box for like 20 bucks. There was like 10 of them in there. Anyway, this goes right here. And what you do is you just print off um, a document with your logo on it that says, please check in here for 10% off your next order. People have their phones out already. They're already on Facebook. They want to check in. They want to say something. And if your product sucks, well, then they have an opportunity to say something negatively. So it gives you an opportunity to improve. But you put this right here on your counter. I don't know how many people don't do this. I don't see this anywhere. Not at a farmer's market, not at a local business, not anywhere. Being able to put this placeholder on the front counter of your business. So that when the people walk in that are highly trafficked, whether it's a restaurant, a dry cleaner, a pizza shop, a bank, I don't care what it is. If people are walking into your business and you don't have something that instructs them that they can check in because you want to get uh, check in on Facebook or or, or check it on Facebook and post a picture and say something nice to you, well, then you're being grossly negligent by allowing someone to say something positive about your business, number one. Number two, once they check in, it asks them, do, number one, they're checking in. Number two, they're creating a piece of content. That's first and foremost. That's awesome, right? Number two, they, they, and they like your page. So you're instantly, you've now got them in your digital uh, ecosystem, right? Next, it asks them, do you want to, just by default, I click into Equinox Gym, it says, do you, do you suggest this place? Why, yes, I do. And if I've got a great experience, I'm going to go leave a review, a recommendation, a review. The more recommendations, the more reviews you have, the more Facebook prioritizes your business when people are searching for what you do. All right, so give people an opportunity and give them something. I don't care if it's a lollipop, it's a cookie, it's a bag of pretzels. I don't care what you do. Just encourage them by saying, hey, listen, check in and we're going to give you something. Number one, we all love something for free. Number two, we all love being recognized. And number three, people love reciprocating um, the favor. Like we do something for you, you do something for us, or maybe they just do something for you or vice versa. People want to say good things about a good experience. Don't make it difficult for them, right? So first and foremost, encouraging people that are walking into your business, I don't care where it is, to check in, number one. Number two, um, Encourage them to share content and what they're doing. Maybe share the page with their friends or share it on their timeline, whatever they want to do that comes up through conversation on here. And if they feel inclined to leave you a review, great. Now, you need to understand Facebook is a, is a search engine too. I sometimes forget that until I need to find a video that I shot or an interview that I shot two or three years ago. But if I go in there and I type in Sebastian Rusk, Agent 2021, Gary Vaynerchuk, that interview, which went crazy viral uh, last year, uh, pops up, but I can't go and find it for some reason in some, in my, on my personal page. I, I can't explain the Facebooks <laughs> on finding content, but it is a search engine. So people will, will they, maybe they don't use it as much right now, but they will continue to, um, it, will, it will increase by people uh, going in and use it, utilizing that search bar to say dry cleaner, Coral Gables, um, uh, title and escrow company, Coral Gables social media marketing company, Coral Gables. They'll start utilizing just like you use Google as a search engine. Why? Because Facebook is being designed to be a hub for businesses to showcase what they do and for consumers to be able to connect with those businesses, right? So empowering small businesses are very, very strong in that department because they know that small business is truly the, the, the core lifeblood of their business as an advertising company, um, if, we're, if we're calling a spade a spade. But Facebook Instagram, LinkedIn, having a personal brand, Sebastian, speaker, MC, storyteller, creator of Social Buzz TV. 
Social Buzz TV creates the videos. We got Title Buzz. We got Window Buzz. We got You Got Served Buzz. We got all the content that Social Buzz TV's agency cranks out and distributes. So we create the content and we share it through Facebook, some on our, in, on our, on our Instagram account, some on our YouTube account, right? And then I take the content that we share on behalf of Social Buzz TV and I endorse it and I share it. On this week's episode of Title Buzz, Rich talks to us about the upsides of a real estate closing transaction, right? And I tag Rich and I tag everybody in his office. And do you understand the ecosystem that we've already created? I'm, we're, the, the piece of content's going out on the Coral Gables Title and Escrow Facebook page. I'm sharing it, talking about it, endorsing it, tagging Richard, everybody else in the office there. They're sharing the content. We share it with people in our, in our B&I chapter which is 36 plus members that they then go on and share it. You can create your actual own network of distribution just by having people that share your content. Now, we don't want to overdo it because it annoys people, but sharing content consistently and the same people are sharing the same consistent content and more and more people start to do that, people see, wow, Cole Gables, Tyler, and Estro's got quite the squad behind them sharing their content. I want that too. Yeah, you should. They, they, you should lead by example for what they're doing there at Coral Gables, Tyler, and Escrow. I'm really excited uh, about it. They fully embraced the content strategy from from weekly video content with Title Buzz to the Title Talk Show, where Rich Barber sits down with key leaders in our community and talks about what they do. A podcast um, with Rich's best friend, one of his largest real estate brokers he works with, um, where they talk about things that absolutely drag me and berate me through the mud. They have a blast doing it. People love the content, and but <laughs> really wrap their arms around the whole um, social media content strategy. But you need a personal brand and your brand. If you own the company, great. Start creating content on behalf of your personal brand. If you're a sales rep or somebody representing the company or anybody working for the company, start creating your own personal brand. If you sell ducks, then it's Fred the Duck Guy. It's not Ducks R Us. Fred the Duck Guy works at Ducks R Us, but Fred the Duck Guy might not work at, duck, at, at Ducks R Us next year. He may be at Ducks Unlimited, right? So Fred the Duck Guy still has Fred the Duck Guy. Fred talks about ducks. That's what Fred does. Doesn't matter where Fred works. Fred creates content about ducks, educates about ducks, speaks about ducks. If you want to buy a duck, see a duck, whatever you want to do regarding ducks, Fred is your guy. He just happens to work for Ducks R Us right now. But as we know, the revolving doors happen this day and age, specifically this day and age, because it's easy to switch a job or just quit and start doing anything you want on your own. So personal brand, number one tip. Create a personal brand. Create a personal brand. If you own a brand, congrats. Create content on behalf of your brand and create your personal brand at the same time. Your personal brand can drive traffic to your business brand just by sharing content and creating content on behalf of it. For instance, you shoot a video as Fred the Duck Guy, Ducks R Us shares the content. Ducks R Us creates a blog post, Fred the Duck Guy shares the post. You see how it crosses over back and forth on here? It's more reach and more distribution based on what you're doing. So tip number one on the top three things your brand needs to absolutely crush it in 2019 is to build a personal brand that complements your business brand. Number two, I was already talking about this and um, it, it kind of fits into what, what I've, I've been talking about this whole time and I'm going to cut it loose because I've been babbling here for almost 30 minutes. I got uh, this tip and one more. Uh, for you. And that is consistent daily content um, that complements your brand on a daily basis. Photos, videos, blog posts, third-party content, content that complements your brand. I always use the example that Jay Bear used in, in one of his books, um, Utility. That's Y-O-U, Utility. And he talks about the brand Columbia, the outdoor gear. They created an app to teach people how to tie knots and they don't even sell rope. Do you understand the compliment there? Doubletree, they're a hotel. They provide a great experience, but their cookies are off the charts. The check-in process is dumbed down and is put at, and puts you at ease when they reach down to the oven, they open it and they pull out a hot, one of a kind, double tree, chocolate chip, oatmeal cookie. Oh, I can smell them now. That's something that complements the Doubletree brand. Doesn't always have to be about what you're selling. Hashtag, don't pitch me, bro. And last, but certainly not least, your brand needs a show. I don't care if it's a podcast, if it's a live show, if it's a pre-recorded show, your brand needs a show. Why? Because you are being grossly negligent to your community by not sharing 
content about what you do and educating and motivating and differentiating your brand from the rest of the world out there and helping people understand what it's all about. My buddy Bruce Turkel said it so brilliantly years ago, and it still rings true today. Your brand is not about you. And the reason I bring that up is that I hear constantly when people say, I want to shoot videos for my business, but I should be shooting videos for my business, but I suck on camera. I look like crap on camera. My videos will suck. I'm not you, Sebastian. Well, I would do it if I had the personality like Rich Barber or like you. All of those are BS excuses that are keeping you from where you are right now to where you want to be with your video and social media content strategy. That was some life coach-ish right there. But it, need, it needs to be said and you, it, needs, it needs to be heard too uh, pertaining to what you're doing. You need to start a show of some sort to remain consistent with your content and hold you accountable. If you got a podcast to record every week or you're recording a podcast episode every other week, whatever the consistency is, you're on the hook for that. Your community starts to receive the content uh, and, and really enjoy it and you not providing ongoing content, they're like, what's happening here? I don't get it. So you wanna be consistent with that. If I was starting out right now, and I had to say, listen, I'm a brand, and I sell you know, lights, then um, I'm gonna start by creating and committing to, to one post a day. Maybe it's a picture, maybe it's a quick video clip, maybe it's a piece of third-party content. I'm gonna, I'm gonna commit to one piece of content on a daily basis, at least Monday through Friday. And I'm gonna commit to a Facebook live show and I'm gonna commit to doing that every other week because that's realistic for my, for my schedule. I know that every other week I can commit to doing a Facebook live just like this. And in that Facebook live, I'm gonna educate people about the lights that we sell, about how they work, about what kind of batteries they take, about how to turn them on, how to turn them off. And I'm gonna break down the lights because I am Seb the light guy and I'm gonna help you better understand everything and anything that you need to know about the lights that we sell. And I'm gonna do that through a Facebook live. When I'm done with this Facebook live, I'm going to take the video. I'm going to, I'm going to re-upload the archive video to YouTube and I'm going to type in best portable light company, Miami. And then I'm going to type my name in the topic and I'm going to post that video on YouTube so that it gets archived or excuse me, so that it gets, um, it gets, um, uh, it shows up in the Google Ag algorithm search results. Google owns YouTube. Content on YouTube gets uh, content on YouTube gets indexed on Google. Ever search for something and a video pops up from YouTube and solves your problem? Not just a hat rack. That's what you want to be able to do. That's what I would be doing if I was starting Seb the Light Guy. Take the video that I did live. Take the archive. You can download it once it's done. Upload it to YouTube. Keywords for YouTube. I'd go use Google Keywords tool and find out what people are searching for pertaining to portable lights and the most expensive words I'm gonna start utilizing as my title in my YouTube video. Then after that, I'm gonna go pull the audio from it and I'm gonna hire somebody or if I feel inclined because I know how to use GarageBand because I play in a sideband after work, I don't, I'm just using this hypothetical story. Um, then I'm gonna open up GarageBand, I'm gonna pull the audio off of the video, I'm gonna create an intro with background music and I got myself a podcast. So I'm gonna submit a podcast, I'm doing a live show, I got a piece of, of, of YouTube content. And then once I get the swing of this, I'm gonna to commit to actually trans, uh, translating my blog post, transcribing rather my, my, my video into an actual blog post and that's just basically having someone type out exactly what you said, creating a new title, including the video and maybe a picture there and that gives me actually my fifth piece of content. Live show, video for YouTube, video for Facebook to run an ad on, video teaser for Instagram, and uh, a podcast episode, five pieces of content. I'm committing to twice a month. That's what I would do right now if I was Seb the light guy and I didn't have the budget or the wherewithal to be able to hire somebody like Sebastian, not Seb the light guy, that's a different guy, but Sebastian uh, with Social Buzz TV to help me execute this content strategy and get it going. So number one, create a personal brand that supports your that supports your business brand. Number two, consistent content that's going on on a daily basis. I don't care what it is. Something that pertains to your brand, complements your brand, and adds value to your network so people will read it and go, gosh, I'm really glad that I like this page. And last but not least, a show. I just broke down an entire strategy that I use a lot on going from a live show to get an archive video, to get a podcast episode, to get a blog post from, all within one piece of content. But you can choose just to go live. You can choose to do a a three minute video once a week and just upload it right from your phone. YouTube's got an awesome app. Again, these are all the tools and resources you need. I'm giving you the car. 
I'm giving you the keys. Heck, I'm even starting it for you. All you got to do is jump in and drive. And what I mean by that is I'm breaking down the strategy and the process of how it all works. So with that being said, while time flies when you're having fun, if you guys had any questions at all, hit me up. If you're trying to figure out what your social media strategy is for 2019, you want to start integrating video, you want to start integrating podcasts, we've got all we've got systems and 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 services in place to be able to heck, help you go from zero to completely launch. So the time's now. We got like three weeks, a little maybe a little bit less before 2019's here, and then we got the first week of January too. There's a lot of downtime where we can actually execute on getting this content off the ground. So uh, if you want to learn how to launch a podcast, I put together an absolutely free course that's all yours. Visit freepodcastlaunchclass.com. If you're looking to launch a podcast, the podcastlaunchlab.com has some more information, all free information, free course. You can you sit there and take the course and read my eBooks and read my blog posts and watch my, watch my videos, but chances are you're never going to launch a podcast. I'm going to continue to encourage you to till I'm blue in the face, but hopefully you'll just say, you know what, maybe this isn't my lane. I'm going to do what I do best, and that's my dry cleaning business, and I'm going to retain a professional to join my team to be able to help me start creating content. And I may be, Maybe I'm that professional. Maybe it's somebody else. I don't know, but you cannot win the race unless you are in the race. So any questions, let me know. Uh, my new book podcast sucks if if you don't have one drops uh, late January. We got pushed back a couple of months because I'm a perfectionist some days. So lining everything up, getting it together. It's going to be a small book. It's going to be a little small pocket book. Just a little. My Lewis House had one called Millionaire Morning. It's a little four, almost four and a half by six and a half size. Small Grant Cardone's got one too, and I thought, hey, you know what? Those are pretty cool. They're small little pocket books, but um, we're going to treat it just like a normal book. We're going to do a book launch and talk. Talk to my friends over at Books and Books too. So lots of exciting things teed up here already for 2019. I'm fired up about it. You should be too. But remember, the time is now. Yesterday, you said tomorrow. And one more quote, which is my favorite of all times from the one and only Dr. Martin Luther, not Junior, his father. And that is how soon, not now, becomes never. Hey, thanks a bunch for your time. You guys have any questions, hit me up. If you're watching this on YouTube or listening to this on iTunes or wherever you consume podcasts, feel free to drop me an email, srusk at socialbuzztv.com. You can find me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, just about any social platform out there. My handle is at Seb Rusk. You guys have a super fabulous Thursday and we'll talk to you soon. And remember, podcasts suck if you don't have one. Social media does too.